Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kevin Weiner and I will be the moderator on this webinar, Geospatial Analytics, When, Where, and How You Need Them. I'm excited to be joined today by our presenters, Rebecca Lassica, Director of Partnerships at Harris, Dimitri Bellos, Geosystems Engineer at Cloudio, and Jamie Goodman, Founder, President, and CEO at High Speed Computing. I've muted the phone lines for all attendees, so if you have any questions at any point during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions chat box, and our presenters will try to answer as many of them as they can at the end of the presentation. We're recording the webinar, so if uh, you'd like to send a link to the recording to colleagues, you can do so. We will send you an email within about 24 hours with that recording, and it will also be available on harrisgeospatial.com. Without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to our first speaker, Rebecca. Thanks, Kevin. This is Rebecca Lassica. I'll leave this up a little bit. I am really honored and pleased to present with partners today, Geospatial Analytics, when, where, and how you need them. Uh, really, this is made possible through partnerships. Um, what I'd really like to showcase at this webinar, and I hope that everybody takes away, is how we're working together to really bring you the analytics that you need um, in all the different ways that you might need them. Um, with that, I'm really honored to also be joined today by a special guest, Jeff McKissick, a solutions engineer here at Harris. And he's going to start by giving us a brief overview of uh, who is Harris um, and why we're here. And then um, we'll also hear about who is Claudio, who is High Speed Computing, and jump into some demonstrations. Um, so with that, uh, Jeff, it's all yours. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, like she said, I'm a solutions engineer here at Harris, and I'm just going to go over a couple slides to tell you about who we are. Uh, Harris Corporation is about a worldwide organization with about 100 countries. We have about 21,000 employees, 9,000 of which are engineers and scientists, so we're pretty proud of that. Harris has four segments, uh, communication systems, space and intelligence systems, critical networks, and electronic systems. We fall under space and intelligence system, which in simplest terms provides broad sensor and payload expertise, extensive ground system development, and proven high volume processing capabilities. Within the space and intelligence systems division, we are a small geospatial solutions business side. Our expertise lies primarily on applying advanced geospatial technologies to solve hard, complex problems. Organizations from across industries really rely on our in-depth knowledge and advanced geospatial analytics, machine learning, and remotely sensed data to make better decisions. So some of you may be familiar with what we do and some of the products we provide, but for the rest of you, I'll give just a high-level overview of what we're going to show today. Envy is our geospatial image and data analysis software solution used to extract meaningful information from all types of geospatial data so that business and organizations can make more informed decisions. Envy is known for its advanced analytics and powerful API that allow that makes it easy to extend, customize, and automate a tool to fit a variety of business needs. Envy is also all about raster image processing. It is data agnostic and contains a variety of tools to pre-process and process a number of different data formats, including multispectral and hyperspectral data. IDL is our interactive data language. Envy was primarily written in IDL, so through IDL you can access most of the tools Envy has available. We also have Jaguar, which is our web-based solution that enhances situational awareness by providing geographically dispersed teams with on-demand access to critical geospatial intelligence data. It allows you to ingest data in live video streams, as well as reduces the time from data collection to decision-making through a flexible platform that can be accessed from the cloud, mobile devices, or desktops. We also have the ability to read in LIDAR and SAR data as well, so if that's the type of data you work with, we can most certainly help you out with that. Finally, we have our geospatial marketplace, which provides full access to the best commercially available satellite and aerial imagery from a single online source. Additionally, we can provide a variety of data-derived products that range from simple image worth rectification to advanced biz and SIM models. So with that, um, that's just a quick overview of what we do here at Harris. I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca to tell you more about today's scenario. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Um, good high-level overview background, and let's um, 
hear from Claudio. We've got Dimitri on the line to tell us a little bit about Claudio, what they do, and why they're here today. Thanks, Rebecca, and thanks everybody for participating in this webinar. I would like to I would like to say a few things about Claudio and uh, what it does exactly. So Claudio is a geo marketplace which simplifies the geo business for customers and partners. Our customers can save costs and administration efforts with ready to use geo services uh, such as the Envy the Cloud or the Watermask from high speed computing. These services include solutions for many industries varying from agriculture to urban planning as well as multi-purpose remote sensing imagery, elevation data, thematic maps, software, analytics, and a secure and scalable ICT. In addition, our Cloudio partners have the opportunity to expand their market reach and increase their competitiveness with new business models for data, software, and IT, all enabled by Cloudio's unique cloud architecture. Complementary platform services simplify access and processing of geodata and publishing of geo information. Lastly, startups speed up their application development and reduce their time to market with our geo service incubators. And since we are talking about geo services, uh, Jamie will give us some uh, information uh, from high, uh, high speed computing part. Thank you, Dimitri, and uh, hello to everyone. It's a pleasure being here today and speaking with you. Uh, let me give you a, a kind of a high level overview of high speed computing. Uh, at its fundamental level, we're focused on developing next generation geo apps. So these are independent geospatial applications that transform geospatial data into actionable information. And ultimately, this is what everybody's really working on here, is we want to put information and solutions into your hands. Now, our particular objective when developing these applications is to put the users first. We want to deliver information that people need in formats that they can use. And at the same time, we have an extensive background in geospatial science with expertise in remote sensing, scientific research, software development, and cloud computing. So with all that together, our products are developed using sound scientific principles. They're designed to be inherently scalable for use in on-demand cloud and enterprise level computing environments. And they're specifically created to meet the needs of both geospatial specialists and non-specialists alike. Our mission through these applications is to help democratize access to geospatial products and geospatial information. However, we know this is a, an enormous task and we recognize that we can't do this alone and that there's an entire ecosystem needed to meet this objective. So we've partnered with Cloudio and we're very excited about this to become part of their rapidly growing geo marketplace as well as leverage their robust IT infrastructure. Uh, and we're also partnered with Harris to build our applications on top of their industry-leading geospatial software framework. Uh, we're looking forward to sharing more with you during today's webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. That's a great overview and a really good segue into our agenda. So what we're really here to do today is showcase how we're all working together to bring geospatial analytics um, to the customers in uh, various different ways, where you need them and how you need them. So we're going to showcase a couple of different things through some demonstrations here today. The first one is that we're going to introduce Envy in the Cloud. Envy in the Cloud is really a platform where you go online, you log in, and you start working. It is a fully functioning version of Envy that you might imagine having a, as a desktop application, but it's in a cloud environment where the infrastructure, licensing, and everything that you need is already done for you where you simply go, you log in, and you do your project. Um, we'll go through a simple classification workflow just to get a look and feel. Um, and then from there, the other thing we're going to be showcasing is how to leverage all of those analytics in Envy that you may use the desktop to prototype or develop, but how are those all exposed as apps to actually answer a question or really produce a solution to a problem? And so Jamie will give a demonstration of uh, how high-speed computing is using NV Analytics to do just that. And then what we're really excited about is that we're going to be introducing as well um, an NV in the Cloud trial and more details to come at the end of the webinar. A brief introduction before we jump into the demo. NV in the Cloud um, is really simple to sign up for. When you become an NV in the Cloud user, you'll get a link where you can click and go online. You'll get some login credentials that will be emailed to you. You enter those and you immediately start working. When you disconnect from Cloudio, 
all of your work will be saved and you can resume your work exactly where you left it later, uh, anytime um, when that is during your, um, your access. So before we jump into the demo, um, I think that we have a poll. Um, Kevin? Yes, thank you. Our first poll question that we'd appreciate if everyone could respond to is how often does your organization have projects with geospatial image analysis components? So if you could, please select one now. All right, I'll close it up and share the results. So it looks like we've had about 57% of the people say that they regularly use them. About 18% said uh, sporadically and another 18% infrequently and only 7% uh, said intermittently. Thanks, Kevin. That's really um, interesting information for us. You know, it's great to hear that there are a lot of you out there regularly um, performing projects that use geospatial analytics as a component. So that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that information. And um, we're going to jump in and, and show a demo. So I pre-recorded a video that I'm actually going to talk through um, to kind of uh, minimize any latency that we're going to have on the internet of running through the demo live. So bear with me as I talk to uh, this video. After you register for Andy in the cloud, minimize, you will please. receive a welcome email with a link to your Envy instance along with your login credentials. Sorry guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute this so that I can talk over it and uh, kind of walk you through what's going on. But really before jumping in, again, the, the takeaway here is that we're going to see a fully functioning NV version that's not installed on my desktop. This was done completely in the Cloudio environment. So when you log in, you will receive your login credentials. And once you sign in, NV is going to be pre-licensed and ready to use. So for this demo of using Envy in the cloud, we're going to start with making a simple land cover map and feature CompSat data courtesy of SI Imaging Services. CompSat 3 data is 14-bit data. It includes a four-band multispectral um, image as well as a pan band of 70 centimeter or 0.7 meter spatial resolution. So note that CompSat data is one of dozens of sensor formats natively supported by Envy. So before jumping into the processing, we're just taking a look here at how easy it is to explore your data and metadata in MB. You can simply view information about your data in the metadata browser or open the data manager and explore information about your data directly. Now before running through a pre-processing workflow, note the searchable MB toolbox at the right and the dozens of pre-processing and processing analytics that are exposed either as discrete analytics or as full processing workflows. Before we make our land cover map, there's various pre-processing steps to follow, really just best practice, that enable you to maintain the pixel integrity of your data, while also removing sensor and atmospheric artifacts. This ensures really that the most accurate processing results are obtained, and that's really one of the value propositions of Envy. So since our data for this demo also include a pan band, we'll also use that information to pan sharpen our scene for higher resolution and more granularity in our results. So the first pre-processing steps that we're running here are radiometric calibration and quack atmosphere correction. Note that the output from one process becomes the input to the next step. And the final step in the pre-processing here is going to be NN diffuse pan sharpening, um, which is one of the newer analytics that we put into MV, which we do on a regular basis. Um, what we'll do here uh, in a moment is we're going to note the difference in the spatial resolution between the multispectral and pan band. This really showcases a little bit of the ability to use Envy as an electronic light table where you can really explore layers and explore your data um, to interact with it as you're doing any kind of R&D or, or different types of processing. Also notable here is that these steps are run as discrete processes for the purpose of the demo. But these analytics can easily be strung together as an automated workflow using IDL. And that is part of your MV in the Cloud um, instance. You do have access to IDL. 
So to verify that the data are now in an analysis ready state, we're going to simply take a look at the spectral profiles before and after pre-processing. This profile plot um, is a plot that represents the value of each band for a given pixel. So note that once the data are in an analysis ready state, the values in each band for this vegetation pixel are free from sensor and atmospheric effects. So we can go ahead and process. So to make our land cover classification map, we're going to run one of MV66 spectral indices um, that ships. Um, so note that when um, you run spectral indices, MV is smart enough to expose only the ones that are appropriate for the bands that you have as input. For this particular analysis, NDVI was selected as the spectral index. And as expected, you'll see that areas that are bright uh, have vegetation, areas that are dark do not. And for the goal of the demo, we're just going to simply separate the impervious surfaces from the water, from the vegetation, by thresholding these NDVI values, where the lowest values are water and strong shadows, shown in blue, and vegetation is green, impervious surfaces are shown here in um, a gray. So really, Envy in the cloud enables you to input your remotely sensed data, interactively explore your data, and apply the analytics you need, ranging from land cover maps, as in this example, to change detection, target detection, material identification, feature extraction, and beyond, all in a ready-to-use environment for just the time you need it. I'm going to stop this video and we'll go back to our slides. Um, another real quick shout out um, to SI Imaging Services. Um, thank you for the sample data. Um, as well as just some example land cover maps that were developed on the Claudio uh, platform for this demo. Okay, so before we jump in to using these analytics as an app and turn it over to Jamie, I think we have another poll question. All right, so our next poll question is, what is your preferred environment to run your image processing tasks and analytics? Please select one of these options now. Give everyone a couple more seconds to answer. All right, let's look at the results. So it looks like about 39% of people say that they use a thick client or desktop software. 29% would consider a virtual desktop. 25% run apps where workflows are executed quickly and easily. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so yeah, again, thanks for sharing all that information with us. It's really interesting um, kind of how we're starting to see things split up between people running their applications at the desktop versus in apps or something in between. So I think that's a really good segue uh, to turn it over to Jamie to introduce a little bit about what HighSpeed is doing to leverage um, apps and development environments like Cloudio to make those apps available. Uh, to the users. So with that, Jamie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, yeah, perfect segue. Uh, we're building our apps, uh, as we mentioned, you know, using uh, the Harris uh, geospatial software framework. So with that, what we're really saying is that we're using that IDL NV framework to build discrete apps. Uh, one of the examples of what we've done is Watermask, uh, which is discrete, automated, online, on-demand application that is designed to meet a specific need. So in this particular case, the application delineates surface water features, providing uh, valuable information for applications such as water supply management, think reservoirs and, and lakes and that sort of thing, uh, flood assessments, and a host of other coastal and inland aquatic analyses. To use this app on the Cloudio store, there's no need for any remote sensing expertise. All you need to do is select your study area and the output products are generated automatically. Uh, shown here is a screenshot of the water mass application on the Cloudio store. Uh, we're going to return to this shortly, but first let me provide you with a little more information on the app itself. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, uh, this app is uh, designed to provide 
global insight on the location and quantity of one of the, our planet's most valuable resources, water, which is critical for human health, welfare, food security, and environmental sustainability. Thus, if you're working in this domain, there's clearly a value in this type of a product. Uh, what's more, by using, integrating this app onto the Cloudio store, we can use it not only to derive information from a one-time uh, sample of imagery, we can also look back at the historic imagery or even launch an ongoing monitoring program into the future, uh, which is essentially like a periodic monitoring and analysis. Uh, as currently structured, where we support Landsat 8 and Sentinel-2 imagery, this isn't to say that other sensors aren't being considered or couldn't be easily adapted, but this is where we've started. Um, the output uh, is in ready-to-use geotiffs and shapefiles. So these are kind of standard geospatial formats that you can immediately visually interpret. You could incorporate them directly into reports or presentations without any further processing. Um, or if you're a more advanced user, you can ingest them into your own software packages for further analysis. Um, so if you have a specific project need, and there's an app, and there's an app for that, I, you know, I hate, I hate to use that phrase, but I guess I will. <laughs> there's an app for that. Uh, you either and, and you either don't have your own geospatial staff, or you want to be more efficient with the resources you do have. Then I believe you'll find this type of standalone app to be really valuable. It's not just data on demand; it's information on demand. Uh, now let me turn the presentation uh, back over to Rebecca for uh, a couple videos on how easy it is to order all this from the Cloudio store. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, and that's um, that's really great information. Really love that that catchphrase as well. Um, accessing the actual answers that you need when you need them. But yeah, what I'd like to do is um, take that opportunity to show everybody how easy it is to order a water mask on the Cloudio store. So Dimitri's been kind enough to provide us with a video of how easy that that process is um, and how that works. Let me pull that up. Cloudio store home page, log in first to your account, click Marine from the solutions category, and select the geoservice water mask. In order to configure your water mask geoservice, first draw a polygon with your area of interest. Select the desired sensor, select the start date and the monitoring period. Press calculate to see the final price and add your geo service to the card before you proceed to order. If you have a special request, please insert it in the remarks field or just contact us. Okay, so it's that easy to order a water mask from the Cloudio store. Um, and before we move on a little bit further, uh, Dimitri's been kind enough to also furnish us with a video to show you if you do prefer to work in an Envy in the Cloud desktop environment, to have access to all of Envy, how easy it is to order Envy in the Cloud. From the Cloud Deal Store homepage, logging first to your account, click GOIT from the products category and select Envy in the Cloud. From the options menu, select optional add-ons and academia discount if it is for educational purposes. Then choose the desired start date and subscription period. Press calculate to see the final price and add your configured envy in the cloud to the card before you proceed to order. If you have a special request, please insert it in the remarks field or just contact us. Great. So hopefully everybody gets a sense of how easy that really is to order um, from the Claudio store. So what we're going to do um, now is I'm very pleased to introduce our seven-day free trial. So thank you to our partners at Claudio and also to their infrastructure provider from Global Access, we are able to provide for a limited time only Envy in the Cloud seven-day trial to the first 100 users. This offer is going to be good until March 31st. 
and is really an opportunity to get a feel for what it is to use the Envy in the Cloud full functioning version of Envy in the Cloudio infrastructure where you can simply receive a logon and start working. Um, you'll have a Try It Now link at the bottom here, but we'll also follow up by sending an email with this link in it uh, for you to register for your trial. So with that, before we open up the phones for questions, um, I think that Kevin has one final poll question. I do. So after hearing the offer in details, how likely are you to request a trial? Please select one of these options below. All right, so it looks like we had a pretty high turnout. About three quarters of people said that they are likely to request one, another quarter considering it, um, and no one said that they're not likely to do it. So um, I'm sure Rebecca will attest to the fact that there is a limited number of uh, seats available for the trial. So if you are interested, um, please uh, sign up right away. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we're really uh, really excited actually for your feedback that um, this does sound like something that you'd be interested to try and, and we're here to support that. So um, definitely please get in touch with us. And I guess with that, Kevin, we can open up the phone for some questions. Great. Um, thank you, Rebecca, Dimitri, and Jamie for your presentations. At this point, as Rebecca said, we're going to um, address some of the questions that have come in. And as a reminder, you can type a question for one of our speakers by using the question area of the GoToWebinar dashboard. So um, the first question, I think, is one for Dimitri. Um, someone asked, can I upload my own data? Um, and I'm not sure if they're referring to data for Envy in the Cloud or an app. So perhaps you could answer uh, both options. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, yes, of course, you can upload uh, your own data or your own software and combine it with the data and software already available in your Envy in the Cloud. Great. Um, someone else said, I'm worried about putting my data and work in the Cloud. Is the data secure? Uh, yes. Uh, Cloudio provides to you your private working space hosting uh, at uh, Global Access which follows strict data security policy. Simply don't share your credential with others and then you are safe. Great. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, Rebecca, this might be one for you. Um, someone asked, can you talk about how I can import, or maybe even Dimitri, how I can import and export data, like in uh, Amazon Web Service S3, et cetera? So Dimitri, I think that you can feel that one is probably along the lines of accessing your own data, bringing your own data to MB in the Cloud. Uh, so, of course, there is the, the possibility of uh, uploading or uh, downloading the data. Uh, but uh, regarding um, downloading, of course, there is a specific protocol and uh, First, you have to contact us, and uh, we can handle it. All right, this next question uh, I think is probably one for you, Jamie. Can the independent apps be adapted to support other sensors? Thanks, Kevin. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the applications themselves are designed uh, based on scientific principles, so they're essentially sensor and data agnostic. Uh, there, there's always, of course, a few limitations. If, if a particular analysis needs certain bands, we can only work on sensors with those bands. But aside from that, which is just a true physical limitation, we can easily adapt uh, the, the applications to your sensors of choice. Great. Thank you, Jamie. Um, the next question is, does the seven-day trial include all work days as well as weekends or just work days? Uh, we are talking about um, 
full uh, week, including the weekend. Great. Thank you for specifying. Um, someone else says, I understand I can use NV and IDL for a specific amount of time, which is great, but can I also get satellite imagery with temporary licenses? Absolutely. Um, apart from ordering NV in the cloud, you can also, uh, through the Cloudio store, find the imagery that uh, fits your projects and um, maybe the area of interest, any, any specification, you can contact us and then we will provide it together in your Envy in the Cloud machine. Okay. Um, Rebecca, this m one might be for you. How does Envy in the Cloud differ from ESE or GSF or Envy 5 desktop? And, and a follow-on, how does the price compare between those versions? Okay, yeah, so um, great question. So um, as you hopefully saw through the demo, we showed a couple different things. One, Envy in the Cloud, where Envy in the Cloud really is a fully functioning version of Envy. So if you were to have Envy 5 desktop sitting locally at your desktop and, and working there, um, it's really a one-to-one -one comparison where Envy in the Cloud gives you access to everything that you'd have at your desktop. You're just up in the uh, Cloudio infrastructure. Um, GSF and ESC are really the enabling technology on the platform that enabled Jamie's application for Watermask, as an example, to run. So leveraging that technology, um, Jamie's been able to publish an app on the Cloudio store that lets you order a uh, water mask by using the Envy task engine to actually process the data and produce the result that's being ordered through that app. So the GSF and um, Envy task engine or ESC technology is being leveraged by Cloudio in that way. Um, I hope that that answers it. Um, in terms of price comparison, um, you know, I really think that one of the biggest takeaways here is that you can order MV in the cloud for only the time that you need it. So if you need a, a perpetual license, that's one thing, but if you have a specific project, um, if you need to work with data um, for a, a short amount of time, you can purchase really only what you need. And so that's really kind of the price delineator there. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, Jamie, this might be one for you. Someone asks, I'm interested in other automated apps and workflows. What other applications are available or under development? Uh, thanks, Kevin. Good question. Uh, yes, Watermask is just the beginning, uh, tip of the iceberg. Uh, in, in the immediate future, we're going to be releasing a vegetation index and a land mask applications, but we've got many more to follow. Uh, but we're, of course, always welcome to input uh, to meet your needs. Uh, we may switch our priority list on, on what's coming out next. So we're we're happy to hear from you. Just reach out, and, and we'll uh, we'll work with you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the next question. This might be for Rebecca. Is the IDL workbench available on the Cloudio site to develop algorithms there? And then, can I download my development code? My developed code. I'll let Dimitri fill that one. Dimitri? Yes, of course, you can download uh, the, the IDL code. It's exactly the same procedure as for uh, downloading um, output of imagery. It's always a specific protocol which has to do with the licenses. So after uh, contacting us, we can arrange and download your uh, results for you. All right, Dimitri, I think this next one's probably for you as well. Is there any discount for students for either the data or for Envy in the Cloud? Yes, absolutely. We have the Academia discount. Uh, if it's a, a project regarding a university or for students, uh, just let us know and you'll get it. All right. Um, Rebecca, someone asked, how does Envy in the Cloud work with high-density LiDAR, um, such as um, LiDAR about eight points per square meter or Geiger mode LiDAR that can be very high density as well? 
Yeah, great question. So, um, you know, remember the Envy in the Cloud instance is a fully functioning version of Envy. So, um, LiDAR capabilities are included in our desktop product uh, for things like um, generating digital elevation models, surface models, um, that sort of thing with your point cloud. We do not actually have a limit on the number of points that we can take in in Envy, and so that's really one of the value propositions of using Envy for LiDAR processing. Um, if you do need something like feature extraction from your point cloud, be sure to select the feature extraction module when you order your Envy in the Cloud instance, and then you will also have access to feature extraction for buildings, trees, and power lines um, with that module in Envy. Okay. Um, someone asks, is there any limitation about the space in the cloud? Um, regarding the space, uh, right now the Envy the Cloud can be ordered with uh, uh, the starter uh, pack, the, the professional one, and the standard, uh, which have uh, differences in the, the size of uh, storage. But of course, we can meet uh, uh, the um, uh, the specifications of the customers after contacting us. All right, thank you. Someone says, our IT people are very busy. Can I get started without bothering them? I guess that's for me, uh, Kevin. Um, yes, for sure. There is no need to install anything. Just connect with your browsers. You don't, don't be afraid. There will be no harm to your network or computer. The end with the cloud is not open to the internet and therefore uh, can't be infected by any virus. All right, thank you. Um, someone asks, do you offer UAV solutions in your cloud service? No, I think we'll, maybe we'll tag team that one. I, I think uh, both Dimitri and I could weigh in, but go ahead, Dimitri, you go first. All right. So right now in the store, uh, we don't have something ready, but it's in the in the plans uh, the next months to uh, to have UAV. Okay, and I'll just um, kind of chime in there that um, you know if you're processing data from a UAV, Envy uh, really tries to be data agnostic. So say that you've got output from your UAV that's a, a geotiff or maybe even a point cloud, and we can easily read that data in for further processing. All right, thank you. Um, someone says, I've developed some analytics. What are the costs if I want to, want to offer these analytics on the Cloudio store? Okay. Um, on the Cloudio store, you only pay if you sell something, and the best, if your analytics is based on Envy service sending, not only IT, marketing and sales is included, and there is no extra charge for the software. Very good. Um, someone says, do you offer other desktop environments other than Windows, such as Ubuntu or other Linux options? Absolutely. Um, the customer just needs to, to tell us what are the specifications for the operating system and we will install it for him. CentOS, Ubuntu, yes. Um, someone says, for me, water mask is not the final product, but it might be helpful as part of my production chain. How can I do this? Jamie? Should I answer this question, or? I, I think we might both have some input on this one. Do you want to start, or would you like me to start? Please start. Okay. Well, yeah, it's a good question, because one thing we, we didn't actually mention uh, when we were talking about some of the output files for Watermask is that inherently embedded in there is another output file that is retained in uh, an NVIDL format that presents a binary mask of water and not water. And that can be read directly into any other workflow as input. Um, so essentially, you could transform Watermask into just part of a larger workflow. Uh, and that's intentional there, uh, but you would have to reach out to Cloud EO uh, to start working with them on how to be a developer, which might be a good segue to you, Dimitri. 
Exactly, Jamie. Uh, you simply can request a calculation for a certain area and a certain period on Cloudio Store and get the result delivered uh, as zip files. Um, however, you can also upload your processing chain to Cloudio and the analytics will be seamlessly integrated. All right, thank you to both of you. Um, someone asked, is it possible to use Dropbox as data input storage or our own cloud? So for uh, matters of security, uh, currently uh, there is not this possibility. Okay, thank you. It looks like there's um, a few other questions out here. Um, but I think in the essence of time, we're going to wrap things up here. So if we didn't get to your question, then someone will follow up with you. Um, and just also remember, a recording of the webinar as well as the PDF from the presentation will be emailed out to you within the next 24 hours. It will also be available on harrisgeospatial.com. If you need to share that with a colleague, feel free. Um, we appreciate everyone's attention on the line. And thank you again, Rebecca, Dimitri, and Jamie for your presentations. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, everyone.